you say, Astrid, that you don't <clears throat> promote the wine industry, but you do promote your, your you do have events. What, um, what are, do you try to accomplish with those events with NSWIG? Actually, um, well, <laughs> fundraising, keeping <laughs> ourselves alive, basically, sustaining ourselves financially. But the, actually, one of the key reasons for doing the fundraiser was to reach out to our local community. Uh, we wanted our, for uh, about eight years, we had only really focused on um, reaching out to our local fellow growers. And with the uh, fundraiser, our annual fundraiser, we decided we wanted to start reaching out to the community to educate them on the importance of sustainable farming and to, edu uh, and to ask basically to make sure that they understand what it's all about and to seek assistance, basically, for their support for sustainable farming. Do you find anybody not supporting what you're trying to do there? I don't think so. Sustainable farm, no. I, I, I really have a, I have to think about that, but I don't think I've ever not found anyone not supporting sustainable farming. I think the only thing that I do find is that people call themselves sustainable farmers and sometimes they're not really, you know, that sustainable. Well, I want to say they are doing. Without naming names, what do you yeah. what? Without naming names, what do you what kind of practices are you referring to? Oh, you know, well, there are very many, many, many things you need to do. Well, you want to do in order to be a sustainable grower, like Remy mentioned. It's not just um, the farming practices, but it also includes the health of your workers, and it also includes including your community, looking at the big picture of things. Uh, some growers, uh, well, you know, I mean, I, I can't even name names, but um, if you just put an owl box in your vineyard, that does not make you a sustainable farmer, you, you know, things like that. But I would say the majority of people are getting very aware of many different ways that they can integrate into their practices now. And I always like to look at it this way. Once they start, they're going to just keep adding on more and more things, and they'll be becoming more and more sustainable through the years. Do you think that some of the <clears throat> smaller vineyards are having a, uh, a tough time with this, or do you think it's easier for the, for the smaller? I don't think it's easier for them. Um, it might be easier for them to get started with it because they don't have to deal with a big corporate company to convince them that sustainable farming is important. But um, maybe the financing, financing side might be a little bit more difficult for them on that side of things. But I, 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 we know very, very small two, three acre vineyards that are organic and or sustainable. Um, and we know very large companies who are sustainable and or organic. I think that in general, there's a very strong push in the Napa Valley to respect the land and the environment, and we all really appreciate the wonderful land that we've been given and the opportunity to grow some of the finest wines in the world, and we want to keep that reputation, and growers here view themselves on the cutting edge in terms of, you know, progress and technology in the global wine marketplace, and as you know, the trends have been in environmentalism and in preserving the land for future generations. And so I think that almost all companies are really excited to learn about ways that they can incorporate sustainable practices and also improve wine quality. And I think in many cases those go hand in hand. So I think that generally there's been a great trend. And um, in my experience in the Valley, and I know, you know, that, that in the past, 20 years ago, let's say, not all growers were using what we call a permanent cover crop or any cover crop um, during the winter and the rainy season to prevent erosion. And now I would say 95% of growers use that. And even when growers use some synthetic pesticides, <laughs> the technology and the chemistry <clears throat> has gotten much better now that you can spray less frequently and there's less toxic chemicals available. And so... Most growers want to learn those techniques. And so I think sometimes you'll get faced with the grower who wants everyone else to prove it and then make sure that they can do it and not raise their costs. And once they know that they're not going to spend too much more money and that they're not going to lose their crop or 
risk anything by being the leaders, then they'll jump on the bandwagon. And so I think that NSWIG has a lot of leaders who are willing to do the experimentation and do the hard work and research. And then it's great because they share that information with the other growers, and the other growers can pick up these sustainable practices and implement them as well, and the whole valley and industry benefits from that.